Well, they say everything looks yellow new when John just died. So this is the second time that uh, Jim has introduced me, and it's usually not politically correct to disagree with that uh, person who introduced you, but I don't see things getting better at UCLA. Jim continues to see the glass is half full, and I see it as getting worse. And so that's why I'm on a flight to China tonight. I waited to take this flight to my home in China so I could speak with you. I will continue to fight for freedoms, principles that I feel strongly with. And tonight I'm going to peel back the onion and you can go back and think of what Jim said. Are things getting better here or not? The title of tonight's speech is The Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Scam. Scam. And I believe UCLA's Department of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion that was established in 2015 is acting inimical to basic Bruin values and fundamental American values, and worse than that, they're creating an environment at UCLA which is making the campus not as safe for women on campus. Just listen for the next 45 minutes and I think you'll be shocked. And the reason I'm not here, it's not because I was so popular, it's because I am willing to challenge the university at every step and to fight for basic freedoms and to fight for students. And so after tonight's speech, I guess you're probably going to give a good view of why Jerry Kang doesn't like me, Chancellor Block doesn't like me, uh, and the left on the campus doesn't like me. It's a delicious irony that I'm actually in Royce Hall speaking to you tonight because, as Jim said, some 40 years ago, I slept in Royce 232. Lisa Bloom was my college debate partner. Back in those days, she was to the left, I was to the right. Students got along. You learned from students with different points of view. And we did win three national debate championships. One of the topics, ironically, that um, well, we won a championship on was unauthorized immigration into the United States is seriously detrimental to the United States. And in arguing that proposition, we would talk about illegal aliens. Yes, illegal aliens, not undocumented workers, illegal aliens taking American jobs. Now, could you imagine that being discussed in a college classroom at UCLA today? No. I mean, that's, that's a microaggression. <laughs> you would need trigger warnings. <laughs> well, I also happened to teach before I was uh, summarily um, uh, dismissed for not being excellent. Uh, I used to teach uh, down the hall a class called Arguing Contemporary Social Issues. Well, one of the topics that we would discuss is resolved. The Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Department should be abolished. So this is going to get into this tonight, and you can make your own determination whether or not um, the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion uh, Department uh, is of any benefit to UCLA students. I think you're being scammed. Um, the campus is not a better place. And when I go through some discrete examples, it's my belief that the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Department enacts policies and takes steps uh, that vitiate the notion of academic freedom. Secondly, um, the middle word is, uh, well, the first word is diversity, equity, and inclusion. All of the policies enacted by Jerry Kang's office, they don't encompass diversity of thought. He has his own right, uh, left-wing, progressive, liberal agenda. It's not diversity of thought. You guys just um, put your hand over your heart to the American flag, and God bless the USA. That is, that is triggering. That is not consistent with um, uh, Jerry Kang's agenda. And the last thing uh, uh, I'm going to discuss tonight in screen examples is uh, the Title IX department, which is supposed to make the campus safer for women, uh, I, I, you'll see it, it uh, lies to the students uh, and refuses to enact policies um, to make the campus safer for students. So let me get into specific examples. This is why they want me gone. I have information and knowledge that nobody else knows, that the administration won't tell you. I don't know if the Daily Bloom showed up today. I hope, they, uh, I hope they did. They seem to always miss my speeches. They need to cover this because they're being scammed and you're being scammed. So let's start with this photo. This photo just happened to be in the Daily Bloom. These two individuals, all right. The tall individual, do you know who he is? That's Jerry Kang. 
Vice Chancellor Jerry Kang. He has built the Leviathan, his Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Department. He makes $444,000 a year, four times more than a regular professor. His Leviathan has many, many departments, a budget over $4 million. One of his departments is Title IX. The person next to him, you'd have no idea who she is. And if you read the Daily Bruin article, her name is Jane Batar. She worked for UCLA for 37 years as a low-level functionary in the Communication Studies Department. She retired all of a sudden this year. And if you picked up the Daily Bruin on the day it comes from the Daily Bruin, you would have seen Vice Chancellor Ken giving an award and a $4,000 gift, the Chancellor's Award, to Jane Batar. And you guys would be none the wiser. You would think Jane Batar, she was a dedicated employee, she must have been in good service to the university, and that's why she got the award. Why is Jerry King giving her the award? Seems somewhat bizarre to me, the Title IX department. On the same day that she received this award, another vice chancellor was giving another professor an award. Why did they choose Jerry King? Well, just think about it for a minute. Now let me give you a chronology of Jane Batar and Jerry Kang and Keith Fink and Justin Gelheiser. So you can see the dirty laundry in the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Department. On May 27th of 2017, I submitted my final paperwork to Dean Gomez in my battle to remain a teacher at UCLA. This is after teaching here for 10 years and trying to get rid of me. Someone I never met named Justin Gelheiser. He was a TA in my department. He had an undergraduate degree at Penn. He was in the education department here, a TA in the comm department, the highest rated TA. Always would ask the students, if I had to sit in one class, one teacher, whose class to sit in? Sit in face. You know, the guy sat in my class for years, thought I was great. Students would say, well, Keith does so much for us outside of class to, to help us. He thought I was a good guy. Never met the guy. He was on the academic senate. He made a mistake. He spoke out in defense of me. On June 5th of 2017, he wrote a letter to Dean Gomez, and he copied the department supporting me. You think, okay, there's no problem. All of a sudden, on July 13th, well, I got fired on June 30th, if you guys don't know that. June 27th, I got fired on June 30th. On July 13th, this person, an administrator in the comm department, sends an email, Justin, we'd like to speak with you. Thinks nothing of it, he's a TA, comes into her office, she's sitting with Pia Spenson, another administrator in the department. And all of a sudden, he said, he, he's confronted, well, there's a sexual harassment allegation against you. This is very serious, Justin. Your career could be destroyed, and your career will be destroyed if you don't resign from your teaching duties in the Comm Studies Department. Now, do you guys know what the policy is here? If an administrator actually has a complaint of sexual harassment, well, if you're following what Jerry King says, because on Jerry King's watch, there's been a whole uh, uh, different tenor and approach to sexual assault claims, we now have a mandatory reporting requirement. So if Jane Batar really knew about sexual harassment, as a low-level administrator, she is not to do the investigation of Justin Gelheiser. She's to report it to Title IX. So she threatened Justin Gelheiser to leave the department. Just like me, she picked on the wrong, she picked the wrong guy. So he didn't go away so easily. That's in July of 2017. Now, if you're just following this through, if there's really a board of sexual harassment, it has to go to Title IX at some point in time. They're then supposed to investigate. Just follow the chronology. So in August of 2017, Gelheiser files a grievance. If you're a, a staff or faculty here and you want to have a grievance against UCLA and you're dealing with the union, I mean, you're going to get caught up in a mill uh, with the weakest advocacy for years. So he files it in August uh, uh, of 2017. He's not getting anywhere with the grievance. Mohammed Cato, uh, gets elevated to be the new director of Title IX. In November of 2017, Gail Heiser goes to Cato and, and he says exactly what happened. You need to do an investigation. This is wrong. 
uh, they try to uh, repress my rights by using Title IX uh, uh, as a sword. And nothing happened with Title IX itself. There was no investigation into the claim uh, of, of harassment. The question to Mr. Cato, was there ever a complaint to the Title IX department as Jane, uh, uh, as Jane Batar should have made a complaint? In the grievance proceeding, Pia Svensson says that they reported on July 14th. Again, I wish the Bruin is here. The Bruin is here and you're following the story. You called Justin Gelheiser. He has the smoking guns that Muhammad Cato told him all sorts of differing stories. We never got the complaint. We got the complaint months later. We got the complaint on July 16th. We got the complaint on July 17th. Any way you slice it, Jane Batar violated the mandatory reporting uh, requirement. But why wasn't there any investigation done by Muhammad Cato? So that's in November. December of 2017, Gail Heiser files a complaint with the Department of Education. January 10, my nonprofit organization to help students and teachers files an amended complaint. January 24th, the Department of Education decides they're going to investigate UCLA for an attempt to use Title IX uh, to blackmail a student. January 24th. UCLA has done nothing since that time to investigate this. What do you think that happens a few days later? All of a sudden, Jerry King wakes up, and on January 30th, six days later, now he's going to have an investigation into Gail Heiser's complaint. What a joke. So they have uh, now an investigator appointed named Lee Fellers to do an investigation. Of course, we tell Gail Heiser not to engage in this farce they already know what your story is. They don't need your testimony. Notwithstanding this, there has to be right a sacrificial lamb because Jerry King's not going to go down. UCLA's not going to lose hundreds of millions of partners with the Department of Education. So here's the finding of April 23rd, 2018. And remember, she got an award of $4,000 as being the best staff member at UCLA. Here's the finding by um, Lee Fellows. The two employees spoke to and questioned Mr. Galsheiser concerning a potential Title IX matter. This was inconsistent with instructions provided in the UC sexual violence and sexual assault prevention training they had taken. But she's going to get an award of $4,000 by Jerry Kang. It gets even funnier. The last sentence of the first point, their intention in doing so was to protect Mr. Galsheiser due to their good relationship with him. Now, how are they going to protect him? I thought this was a claim of sexual harassment, which we were discussing. If you believe what she's saying, they were going to protect him by not reporting it to Title IX and letting him go on his way. Second point, one of the two employees spoke to other members of the comm department about the Title IX report concerning Mr. Gelheiser who did not have a legitimate need to know about the report. This was inconsistent with instructions based on UC material. That was Jane Batar. These are the findings of Lee Feller just a month or two before this award is given to Jane Batar. Feller concludes her report, appropriate university administrators will be notified, no doubt Jerry Kane, of the findings and whether any corrective or remedial action is appropriate. Now, you can connect the dots as easy as I can. Obviously, Jane Batar had to go. They didn't want to fire Jane Batar because Jane Batar could upset the entire apple cart on them when the Department of Education comes calling, which they're going to come calling, and I'm going to be there to help the Department of Education extirpate uh, those individuals at UCLA who are taking steps anathema to principles that we believe in. She was a sacrificial lamb. So they come up, this is just me, you can reach your own conclusions. They come up with some way to appease Jane Batar instead of firing her and have a rabbit dog on their tail. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sink you guys because I did give a report, or I didn't give a report. So they decide to give her $4,000, give her a photograph, give her a certificate, and everybody thinks she was a great employee. Why is Jerry Kane there? You, you figure it out. Oh, but it gets better. It just gets better. Oh, before I get to... 
Now let's think about this on the timeline here. So, indulging in their fantasy, we know that there was uh, a sexual harassment uh, issue that came to the comm department. Their position is they told the Title IX office. Did the Title IX office investigate this sexual harassment claim? The story, as told by Muhammad Cato to Justin Gelheiser, because Gelheiser was never called in, right? Because it's all a fiction. They were trying to get rid of Justin Gelheiser because of his support of me. It was all made up. But if you just indulge in the fiction that there was a harassment complaint and it was reported to UCLA, you would think they would investigate. But of course, they never investigated because they never contacted Gelheiser because there never was a complaint. Their story is, we made a contact to the claim victim, and she never responded. Therefore, matter closed. This should really infuriate you more than everything else I've said up until now. What does that mean? If a woman is raped and assaulted and in a coma, or she doesn't want to respond to the Title IX inquiry, that's it? There's no investigation? The matter's closed? That's nonsense. Even if a victim is unwilling to cooperate, UCLA has an affirmative duty to investigate. The simple thing to do is, you know that Gelheiser is the purported assailant, call Gelheiser in. Question him about the incident. It's just one lie after another lie after another lie, but they think they can sweep it all under the rug. They can lie to the broom, they can lie to you, and nobody, everybody is none the wiser. But let's just, oh, maybe Keith, you haven't persuaded me. Oh, with all of these uh, faults of Jane Batar, maybe she did deserve the, uh, the award. Well, let's go to the next photo here. I don't know if you guys believe in the right to privacy. I don't know if the most comprehensive of rights and the right most valued by civilized man is what the left usually says. And you see this? It's like a camera. It's like a camera to me being hidden under flowers. Guess what department this camera uh, was placed in? You guessed it, Com Studies, the same department that Jane Batar ran as the administrator. So in the grievance I told you that Gelheiser filed in August, Gelheiser discovered that Jane Batar was secretly taping and listening to communication studies students and anyone that came to the Com Studies department. UCLA is aware of this, but of course nothing was done other than to give Jane Batar the plaque with $4,000 and a handshake and a Daily Bruin article thanking her for 37 years of service. So that's one piece, uh, one incident that you guys know nothing about, nobody knows anything about. 